What's up there, people? I'm Luminaire. Welcome back. We're jumping into the Chaos Factory. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is very straightforward. In fact, it's kind of a slaughter fest because I just have a ton of area of effect attacks at this point, and I just lay waste to these bastards. It's kind of cruel, to be honest. Uh, oh wow, another professor. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Make a professor if you're playing this game. Cannot stress that enough. Uh, so, this is another, another two-parter, because they're throwing out uh, chapters by the barrel full these days. However, um, unfortunately, neither of them are story, have story in them, for whatever reason. You would think they'd at least alternate, but no. <laughs> no, uh, no story at all, and the thing is already at a half, at a half hour. So, uh, I decided to cut it off there, rather than try to squeeze three chapters into one. You know that, that that's kind of a lot. But um, I think I'll, I think I'll do a solid, and I'll just uh, I'll do more than one part today. In fact, I should be doing more than one part a day in general, simply because, um, well, it. I mean, cover your ears if you want, don't want spoilers, but I think it would be pretty obvious this is not the final chapter. In fact, there there is uh, two more chapters after this one. So, two more episodes after this one. So, uh, still a ways before I fi actually finish um, this game. And then there's all the post-game content that uh, some people have asked. And yes, I'm, I'm going to show. I have it recorded already. All the extra battles, some of the character worlds, some advanced item world runs, uh, stuff like that. I have uh, several characters at level quad 9 already, um, that have been reincarnated a few times, in fact. Uh, I'll be happy to go over tips and tricks on how to level up that quickly, but not until I get to that part in my Let's Plays. Other than that, um, there's a crap load of games coming out that I want to play, and I can't just be doing, uh, playing a game that came out in the beginning of, sep of September for much longer. Not at this rate, at least. Uh, whatever game I play next, I am most certainly going to record as I go along, as opposed to doing, uh, commentary in post. It, it just simply takes too long. I have to, it basically takes up at least twice as much time since I have to watch all my gameplay footage again and then make commentary. I mean, yes, it has, um, this Let's Play in particular has kind of benefited because I've had the time to read from the guide and give strategies and stuff like that. I think I get better commentaries once I've actually played the game as opposed to playing something for the first time, but at the same time, eh, I, I don't know, it, it's, again, it's the issue of time, really. Um, what kind of games am I interested in playing? Well, let's see. There's, um, I I, I got back a, uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum because I never played it, uh, which I'm playing through right now. It's really good, by the way. Uh, since uh, uh, Arkham City is, is even better, so I hear. So uh, and you know I, I've always liked Bat I've always liked Batman and uh, some of the comic books. I grew up watching Toonami and the WB, so I watched a lot of the animated series. And Batman and Robin uh, with Superman, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so I really appreciate hearing uh, the the voice actor. Uh, I can't remember his name, and Mark Hamill as the Joker. It's super classic. Um, other than that, what else is uh, there? Was Modern Warfare Three comes out in November? Um, some people might cringe, I guess, you know, because it's popular to hate on, but. I, I only my the first Call of Duty game I ever played was Modern Warfare 2, and I never played Black Ops, so um, I enjoyed Modern Warfare 2 quite a lot. So I'm looking forward to three. Probably run through the campaign and play a lot of the multiplayer. Uh, what else is coming out? We got uh, ooh, a lot. We got oh Zelda comes out next month. Skyward Sword. I have that pre-ordered. That would probably be a fun game to let's play blind. Unless, of course, you get stuck. <laughs> I can do Zelda. Uh, also, have a bunch of RPGs that I never got to play. I've lost Odyssey. Uh, that I could do. 
Um, never finished. There's a few games of Xenosaga I never finished, but those games would take a long time. Point is, there's a shitload of games to play. Um, but enough about that. Uh, time to throw. Out, time to do a character. Um, I have gone over every class that is on this map already. We got bouncers, ninjas, professors, slumber cats, beast tamers. I've done them all. So let me scour the guy for something I haven't done. Um, shrooms. It's about time. Let's do the shrooms. Gee! Shrooms are a mixed bag of stats and powers. They're fairly situational, so you won't necessarily want to use them in every battle. Shroom power is a great thing to have if you face an item boss or boss that is female. Having anything that robs 20% of the target's stats is a big deal when your enemy is that powerful. Otherwise, shrooms don't have much in the ability department. Losing half your stats is rarely a good choice unless you get something amazing in return. Soft inspiration doesn't really do that. Uh, Macho Splendor is also a tepid choice. Mitigating damage won't save shrooms from direct assaults. Still, this class has two good magic change attacks, and axe users are some of your best boss killers anyway. Bring out your shroom and let them help out in these situations. Ready for me? So yeah, shroom power, it's ability. Adjacent female enemies lose 20% of their stats. That's cool. Um, pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to elaborate on the usefulness of that. Um, they change into an axe, they can move four spaces, and they have a throw range of six, which means if you throw a character on top of the shroom, they will bounce ahead six spaces in the direction the shroom is facing. Uh, they are 25% weak to fire, weak to wind, and 25% resistant to ice. Their second ability, Soft Inspiration, decreases the shroom stats by 50%, but they recover all their health at the end of each turn. Uh... Half your stats? No thanks. I don't, uh... <laughs> th th that's all there is to it. No thanks. Uh... Punishing Punisher doubles damage against depraved targets. Well... Uh, I guess if you have a succubus which causes a lot of depraved status effects already, then I guess this could be useful. And then finally, Macho Splendor decreases damage taken from female units by 50%. Uh, learn it. Half damage from half units in the game? Sure. I'd do it. Alright, the Edingi, the base class, has an HP aptitude of 100, SP 100, attack 110, defense 110, intelligence 70, resistance 110, hit 100, and speed 80. Uh, nearly average across the board, not really exceeding, not really excelling, or... Um, being very handicapped in any particular stat. They're pretty well-rounded. After the Eringi, we have the Montago, the Matango, the Champ, the Champinion, the Fungus, the Wonder Spore, and Erendum. Sure. Uh, HP stat, aptitude 125, SP 125, attack 135, defense 135, intelligence 80, resistance 135, Hit 125 and speed 90. Uh, average. Nothing special. Um, they learn the slumber spell so they can put enemies to sleep. And here are their uh, class skills. First one is Erringer Jab. Uh, power is F. It can cause sleep, and I think it hits two spaces away. It's, it's weak that has a chance to put the enemy to sleep, but it's one of those cool... For whatever reason, the Shroom grows eyebrows. Really heavy eyebrows during that attack, and I don't understand the reference. Uh, but it also... I, I just love those attacks that have, like, dozens of really small hits. So it's like, it's just whacking you with, like, this thing of mushrooms, and, like, you're seeing, like, eight, the, the number 8, like, 20 times in a row. I, I love those kinds of attacks. Next is Arringer Punch. The power is D. Uh, it hits... It's a point-blank attack. Uh, that, that's all there really is to it. The mushroom just confuses you uh, with mushrooms and keeps hitting you from behind. It's kind of funny. The next one, Arringer Roll. Power is B. 
Uh, I think it's point blank, and it knocks the enemy back two spaces. It's pretty strong with uh, with the D power. And if anybody else knows Hajime no Ippo, oh look, uh, Valvatores can learn Absorption. I'm debating whether to learn it. Um, th this move cracks me the fuck up because it's based on the Dempsey roll, obviously. And just watching the mushroom go gee gee every time it's punching you, I I I laugh hysterically every time. I think it's pretty fucking funny. Uh, one of the best moves in the game. Then we got Mushroom Harvest. Uh, the power is D. It can cause poison or paralysis. That's interesting. Um, it's a fixed area of effect. I think it's a cross. Uh, though pricey, you get to combine all the positive aspects of a monster attack with when using Mushroom Harvest. The enemies take moderate damage and have two chances to end up in trouble. If you're willing to sacrifice your Shroom, have them slap a cluster of new enemies with Mushroom Harvest, and then let any enemies that were poisoned die off before the rest of your team comes forward. Uh, speed is the name of the game in this. <laughs> I don't think anybody has really used Poison Death as a legitimate strategy. As for the magic change of types, which are Axe, um, Eringi Raid, uh, hits a single person two tiles up to two tiles away. It can cause Deprave, and the power is E. Um, useful if the status effect works, otherwise you probably have more p powerful uh, single Axe strikes than that. And then there's Eringi Panic, the power is S. S. Yes. Um, it hits a horizontal row of three, I think two spaces away from you. If you need pure damage instead of ailments, magic change your shroom and let them help a younger axe user slam a few targets as hard as possible. Kind of like Nature Slash from the Wood Golems. Um, so overall, the shroom is not really spectacular in any category. Uh, just, there, there's no reason to make a shroom over any other monster class. It's kind of an average class. It doesn't really have a, a specialty in any... Or a forte in anything, really. Um, you know, as far as Axe users go, I like the Wood Golem more. I mean, as far as... Ma yeah, Axe Magic Change, I like the Wood uh, wood Golem more. Um, make make a mushroom if you like hearing the word gee a lot. What else is there? <laughs> Come with me! Do I recommend them? Not necessarily. I don't think I've known anybody to make a shroom. Ah, here we go. Reincarnating my wood golem. Uh, if I wanted to be a gene, a uh, distinguished, I need like 682, 88 more mana, which could take a while to accumulate. But like I said, eventually monsters will become super easy to level up. So, but instead of trying to get in the extra mana, I'm just uh, using excess mana to bump up some skills. Uh, because all that mana when you reincarnate goes <laughs> gone. So, try to find out how much... The, the, dif the difference between how much mana it takes to reincarnate and how much you'll have left. And then use that mana to uh, buff up some skills or buy an ability or something like that. So you don't waste anything. So I just powered up some moves, and it looks like I'm going to uh, reincarnate my wood golem. I can do anything in my dream. Sure you can. Still a difference of 150, but nothing else really costs that much. No trunk is unsnappable. Sorry about that. I guess I, I, I experiment with the different voices. That's one of my favorite parts. Man, look at that attack and HP. It's, it's towering over the other stats. Your trunk is unsnappable. Cool. Apparently, I reincarnated my slime in some off footage. 
Oh, I'm I'm checking to see what my foreign ministers have done. These are my characters that spend time in other people's senates. And look, people offered me some items as a bribe. I'm actually at the point in the game where I've I finally have access to the land of carnage. So uh, I have a bunch of um, weapons I don't need anymore. So if I go into the senate and I see like a level you know 20 warrior asking for something, and then I give him like a rank 37 legendary axe. <laughs> I, they, they must go like, holy shit, when they see that. Because they're like, well, think about it. It's like kind of generous. And like, what what if you just gave a, a senator, like, that that's clearly like from the start of someone else's game, and you gave them like a legendary trapezohedron or something? Uh, I really don't understand the format of this level. Uh, you know, enemy boost if they get onto your map. So, okay. And then there are some blocks that... I guess that are really far away that you could throw in there as well. I, I really don't understand this layout, so I just go out and attack them. I'm not sure what Nipponichi was uh, shooting for, but okay, it, it's more straightforward than it seems. There's really no strategy; just beat up the monsters. And since we have dragons here, and I haven't gone over them yet, let's go for dragons. Ready for me. Everyone loves dragons. Rock them dragons. Ha! Ah, the dragon. Right. Okay. Uh, get all of the dragon abilities as you level up. They're all useful at one time or another, so having the full spread is a good thing. Leave Fire's Blessing and Dragon's Treasure on while running through the item world. For bosses, swap out Fire's Blessing for King's Dignity. A number of souvenir items count as treasures, and these are good items whenever the case. So it's not limited to put one of them on your favorite dragon character. You find a number of these items in the late game. For example, you get some of them as rewards for completing sections of the X Dimension. Uh, a, a treasure is a non-class specific um, special... Uh, accessory that you can find. Uh, usually, you can steal them. Um, you, you know, they're, they're they're equipment that defy genre. You'll know them when you see them. Uh, let's see. Dragons are tough and brutal. Just throw them towards the action if you want the big guys to get involved. They're not exactly speedy. Having some decent movement items on them is a good idea to mitigate this problem. So yeah, the movement is three. I hate uh, low movement. Um, through range 4, they change into a sword. 20% uh, resistance to fire and wind, and... No, sorry. 20% resistance to fire and ice. 20% weak to wind. Their base ability, Rising Dragon, increases your attack by 10% every time an attack is received. And resets after your character attacks. So, if you receive... So, on the enemy's turn, if you get attacked 3 times and you survive, uh, your attack power is increased by 30%, but will return to zero after you attack. Make sense? The aptitudes for the dragon is HP 120, SP 90, attack 105, defense 105, intelligence 90, resistance 100, hit 80, and speed 70. Admittedly, that sounds kind of pals uh, palsy, right? Paltry? I'm not even sure which word I want. However, their um, aptitude growth is high. Uh, listen to what it is for the final tier. After Dragon, we have the Fafnir, the Nidhogg, the Azi Dahaka, the Tiamat, and finally Bahamut, King of the Dragons. The Bahamut has an HP aptitude of 140, SP 100, attack 155, defense 135, intelligence 110, resistance 120, hit 100, and speed 90. His, so the, his attack aptitude goes up by 10 every time you reincarnate. Uh, you know, huge difference is usually they only go up by 5, sometimes less, but uh, yeah, dragons gain attack like nobody's business the more they reincarnate. Uh, very hard hitting class, possibly one of the hardest, 155 is pretty high. Um, the other highest might be a wood golem. Yeah, we're going gets the 165. I can do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, possibly the second highest in the in for all monsters. 
maybe tied to something else. Uh, as for the other abilities, Fire's Blessing, Fire Attack Damage is increased by 30%. Is this useful? Well, seeing how every single Dragon Attack but one is fire-based, yes. It's only a thousand mana. Learn it. Keep it simple. Afterwards, there's Dragon's Treasure. Increases aptitude by 20% when a treasure item is equipped. Uh, again, 20% in all categories is fantastic. Uh, let me read what a Bahamut's aptitudes would be with this ability if you equip the treasure. Uh, HP, 160. SP, 120. Attack, 175. Defense, 155. Intelligence, 130. Resistance, 140. Hit 120, speed 110. Quite nice, wouldn't you say? And then finally, King's Dignity. Adds 50% more damage when fighting a boss unit. How do you know what a boss unit is? Um, actually, I believe if you highlight the, the enemy and if there's an S over the character portrait, it's a big S. It's hard to miss. Oh, this is Desko's other magic change attack. Dear God! No, no, Desko, no! Ah! That move's crazy. Uh, that's Marshall Transformer, power B. Uh, it'll be your most powerful single sword technique until you learn soaring non apple which is the same power. But yeah, uh, 50% more damage to, bo uh, to boss units. If you have a powerful dragon and you're still trying to beat post-game bosses, uh, this will be pretty awesome. Especially since uh, the dragon has an S power attack. So th these could be uh, a boss killer. Sorry about that. It's pretty handy. Um, yeah. Of course, it's only uh, handy against bosses, but, you know, you can use it to beat um, item gods and item generals as well and stuff like that. Anyway, as for the class skills, we have Windbreaker, powers E, um, it hits two squares in front, it hits two enemies directly in front of you, um, and it's a uh, fire element. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I think it's funny. Uh, next is Dragon Claw. It hits three tiles away. Powers D. There's no elemental damage, so only use this attack if your enemy has a fire resistance. Next is uh, Dragon Missile. The power is D. Um, it's a cross that can hit up to four spaces away, and it's uh, fire based. Uh, great range, um, and it can hit multiple enemies. Def uh, you'll be using this one a lot. In fact, it's its only multi uh, area of effect attack. No, 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 the first one technically is, but it's only two enemies right in front of you. And then finally, Dragon Assassinator. Assassinator. Interesting. Powers S. Fuck yeah. Element is fire, and it can hit up to two tiles away. Here I come! Uh, this, this'll be your boss killing attack. Uh, barring the enemy being resistant to fire, of course. See, look at all those numbers. That's beautiful. Man. Go, Desko! As for its magic change, he turns into a sword. Um, if you have a very high... Equipping it to Val, who has good um, stat, who has good uh, you know, resistance, is pretty good because he'll be attacked a lot and then his attack power will be increased from his own ability and uh, the dragon's ability. So it'll be quite high when you're ready to retaliate. Uh, flame Slash hits three, a horizontal row of three in front of you. The power is E, element is fire. Uh, pretty basic. Uh, I, I wouldn't even bother using it, stick to your normal sword attacks. And then finally, there's fi uh, Final Dragoon. Element is also fire. It's a cross that can hit three spaces away, and the power is B. Um, a decent area of effect attack for swords, considering other than rune dimension, you don't really have many good area of effect attacks. Um, the range could be a bit better, but you can hit a decent amount of enemies with it, and the power is good too. So it's a good match to change attack. All in all, it's a dragon. 
Come on, you should be making it even if it sucked. Dragons are always cool. Um, it just so happens that drag dragons all um were always good for their raw stats, but they didn't really have the best abilities. Like in the, this guy too, they were immune to fire. Okay. Um, in the third game, I don't even remember. Uh, in this game, they're they're awesome. They're quite good. You know, every everybody wants a dragon on their team. Also, if you give them a voice when you make them, you they have like a noble, dignified voice. It's like escaping isn't an option. I just love the the idea of being attacked by a a noble dragon. It reminds me of uh, Dragonheart with uh. Uh, uh, Sean Connery. I'll be surprised if anybody else has seen that movie. Just about done with this level. Sorry there was no story, but as soon as this is uploaded, I'll try to upload the next story chapter. Ah, this is Windbreaker. I'm sorry, that's hysterical. <laughs> it's the sound he makes when he's sneezing. Wow, he really- that really hurt. Am I- is Val weak to fire? I don't even remember. You know, I think he might be. Let's see. Uh, yeah, he is. 25% weak to fire. That'll do it. I couldn't remember if he was weak to fire or ice. I knew it was one of them. Slime Mega! Really? I hate it when they don't die. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't dual canine fist him. That sounds dirty. Chocolate. Dual fisting. Chocolate. Just die already. Here I go. I don't know what I'm thinking right now when I tried to do that. Here I go. Am I trying to capture him? <laughs> Clearly it's not working. I guess I wanted... Yeah, I tried to capture him. Little did I know that at the time I can't make a Fafner, so I, it's impossible to catch. So he destroyed my base panel. Experimentation. Well, that takes care of that. Now I can make a dragon and an archer. Yay! Wow, the next one doesn't have story either. Holy crap. <laughs> well, the next one's definitely a two-parter. Alright, catch you guys in a bit. Thanks for